ancient pyramids, but also, you know, for their gorgeous nature. And writes the letter S in the desert and streams into Egypt. Maybe you can drive the boat all the way to the Wingate Reefs and explore there too. I'm Camilla, I make travel and geography related videos, and today we are zooming in on... Sudan. Sudan, where there are more pyramids than in Egypt and also coral reefs. Let's zoom in! Sudan is a country lying in northeast Africa. It borders seven countries. To the east lie Eritrea and Ethiopia. To the south lies South Sudan, founded in 2011. Before that, Sudan also shared a land border with Kenya, Uganda and the DRC. To the south, Sudan also borders Central African Republic. To the west we have Chad and Libya and to the north lies Egypt. And if you look closely at the border, you can see that there is a border dispute going on here. This is the Halayib Triangle, and both Egypt and Sudan claim this area, while this piece of land, called Bir Tawil, is claimed by neither. So this piece of land actually belongs to no country. However, a number of organizations have tried to claim it as a micronation, but they have not been taken seriously by the international community. Sudan has another border abnormality, it is over the Abyei area. The area has a special administrative status and Sudan and South Sudan agreed to share this area. Sudan and South Sudan have another border dispute over the Radom National Park. Sudan is part of the Arab world. But what is the Arab world? It is a region consisting of 22 Arabic-speaking countries, which are also members of the Arab League, a regional organization. Most of the countries in the Arab world lie in Northern Africa, Western Asia and at the Horn of Africa. So that's the Arab world. The westernmost point of Sudan lies here, touching Eritrea. The southernmost point lies here, on the Abyei area, touching South Sudan. The westernmost point lies here, bordering Chad. And the northernmost point actually lies here, in the Lake Nubia. Or here, in the disputed Halabib Triangle, bordering Egypt. Sudan is a huge country. Before South Sudan, Sudan was the largest country of Africa. Now it is Africa's third largest country, behind the DRC and Algeria and is the world's 15th biggest country. With about 42.5 million people, Sudan comes at number 33 in population, making the country not that densely populated. There are 22 people per square kilometers and ranks as number 160 in population density. In 1960, life expectancy was 48.2 years. In 2019, the number had climbed to 65.3 years. That's a big change. Many of these people live in the capital city Khartoum. Other big cities are Omdurman, really close to Khartoum, and Niyala in the south. Sudan in Arabic is Az Sudan. Sudan is a name given to the region to the south of the Sahara, all the way from Western Africa to Eastern Central Africa. The name derives from the Arabic Bilad Az Sudan, or the land of the blacks, referring to the dark skin of the inhabitants. Get ready to visit capital city Khartoum. Okay, here's the capital city Khartoum, surrounded by the White Nile and the Blue Nile River. Airport lies in the north, International University of Africa, transportation. What is this? Looks like water. Treatment plant, grocery store, mosque. There's a garden. Let's see where we can go in Khartoum. Let's zoom out a bit again. I'm just gonna go and try here. Oh, we are watching a family gathering. This looks like a mall. This guy is having Coca-Cola. Are those trees in the mall? That's really cool. Palm trees inside the mall. Fadil Plaza. That's a beautiful mall. It's really empty. Maybe because of the family gathering? All right, it was fun to visit the city plaza mall, but I want to see the streets too. Looks like a lot of things are happening around here. Maybe that place would be interesting to see. Oh wow, we landed in the Nile River. That is cool. People are enjoying the beach. She's walking in the water. You can see tall buildings here being built. Big bridge. Well, that's a cool building. A little sand sticking out and here are some birds enjoying the water and the sunny weather. Yeah, so this is what the Nile looks like. It definitely attracts people. I would go there too if I was in Khartoum. Now, I still want to see the streets. I'm gonna try one more time now. Okay, let's try here. Oh, where are we now? Well, not on the streets. We're inside some building and, and look at this. 
I get Egyptian associations. Is this like a storage room for old rocks? Wow, this is interesting. I mean, it could be a museum, but it looks like more like a storage room. We have visitors here. Well, that's pretty cool. Landscapes. Let's start with the topography map. What I notice immediately is that the overall elevation is pretty high. Sudan lies on a plateau. Let's start with northern Sudan. The elevation is lower in the north where the Nile River is. The Nile gives life to plants and makes the area greener, but north Sudan is mainly desert. Of course, the Sahara Desert. The Sahara Desert is the largest hot desert in the world. It is about the same size as the USA or China and covers all countries in northern Africa. The Sahara Desert is divided up into regional deserts. So in Sudan, you'll find the Libyan Desert in the northwest, and the Nubian Desert in the northeast. As you can see on the map, the elevation rises as we get further away from the Nile, and we have the Red Sea Hills. This is what they look like in Sudan. Now let's talk about central and southern Sudan. The land is still elevated, but it is not as dry there as in the north. The land gets greener and greener as we go south. We are crossing the Sahel region. What is the Sahel region? It is a zone of transition when it comes to climates and ecosystems. It forms a belt across northern Africa. It is where the dry savanna transitions or changes into savanna. The climate is semi-arid, giving life to more plants. In the west, we have the Mara Mountains. And these are the tallest mountains in Sudan. They are volcanic. Here is a caldera, the remains after a big volcanic eruption, where the top of the volcano has been blown off and we're left with a hole that fills with water. And this is also the tallest point of Sudan, with an elevation of just over 3,000 meters, or 9,980 feet. Before we move on to rivers, I just want to show you another interesting landscape feature. I was looking at the map and noticed this brown thing, and I zoom in and find this amazing strange landscape. It is called the Maidob Volcanic Fields. I couldn't find any good pictures from this place, which makes it even more mysterious and interesting. Rivers. Yes, first the big one, the Nile. It is not clear where exactly the Nile River starts, that is up to discussion, but you can watch my Uganda video if you want to learn about a possible starting point. Anyway, the Nile River is the result of two main rivers coming together the White Nile and the Blue Nile River. The White Nile enters Sudan from South Sudan, and the Blue Nile River originates in Ethiopia. The two rivers come together in capital city Khartoum, then writes the letter S in the desert and streams into Egypt. Ultimately, it streams out into the Mediterranean. As we have already seen, the Nile attracts plants and animals and attracts people. Many towns lie along the river, but Sudan has another river, the longest after one of the Nile rivers. It is the Akbara River. It originates in northwest Ethiopia, enters Sudan at this point and comes together with the Nile at the town of Akbara. Lakes. Sudan's largest lake is Lake Nubia, bordering Egypt. It is a man-made lake, a reservoir, and you can see how big it is when I zoom out and show the Egyptian portion of it. Wow, that's a beautiful picture. Let's do a random street view. Okay, Sudan, where should we go? Somehow this blue dot attracts me. Let's just try there. Okay, it looks like we are inside a town or village. Here we have a small building. Another one there with some open doors and windows. Here the sun is setting behind this beautiful big tree. The roofs are flat here. And there's a wall around their house. It is a sunny day in Sudan. Okay, let's visit another place. I want to go to southern Sudan. Oh wow, we have a woman wearing a colorful dress holding this big basket. Maybe she's cooking, surrounded by big rocks. Is that a bed, maybe, and some shoes, I think? Oh, look at this. These are some clothes, maybe? And here we see this semi-arid landscape with many trees, but it's still dry. Some mountains in the background. Yeah, and these big rocks. Yeah, this was an interesting street view. Ah, but it's high time. I put my ruler in the capital city, Khartoum. Move it for 20,000 kilometers around the globe and we land in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, but not far away from land. These islands are part of French Polynesia, an overseas collectivity of France. Time for travel suggestions! This time, I received some help from Mosnani, a YouTuber currently staying in Sudan, who very kindly gave me multiple travel suggestions for Sudan. Let's start our trip at the International Airport in Khartoum. A special place to visit here is Tuti Island. This is where the White Nile and Blue Nile meet to form the Nile. 
So when you're standing at this island, you can kind of see all three Niles at the same time. Also, you would be surrounded by three cities, Khartoum, Omdurman, and Khartoum North. Okay, let's continue the Sudan adventure by driving north to see the pyramids of Medway. They are located in central Sudan at the Nile River. You know, Egypt is the country that is famous for its pyramids, but Sudan actually has more pyramids than Egypt. These reviews I found speak for themselves. Amazing place a few hours drive from Khartoum. Contrary to Egypt, this place is not yet invaded by tourists and some of the pyramids are still halfway rebuilt and covered with sand. It feels like a real archaeological discovery. Simply beautiful. The ignored history of these Nubian pyramids is astonishing. You get to have the whole site to yourself. You can also camp next to the pyramids either in a permanent camp or find a cheaper option. Bring your own tent or find a local guide. And it is a World Heritage site. Yes, I would love visiting here. For the ancient pyramids, but also, you know, for that gorgeous nature. But the desert is hot. We have to cool down now. Let's move on to a whole other place, to Port Sudan along the Red Sea. From the city, you can drive a boat across the beautiful blue water to the Sankanib Reserve, where there is also a lighthouse. The water is super blue and clear, and because there is coral reef, it is popular to go for a swim and snorkel to take a look at it and enjoy the beautiful fishes. Maybe you can drive the boat all the way to the Wingate Reefs and explore there too. I have learned that Sudan has beautiful nature with big deserts and a caldera with water in it, these volcanic rock formations and coral reefs. Also, I've heard that the Sudanese people are very hospitable and friendly, so Sudan would definitely be a cool place to visit. These were some geographical facts on Sudan. Next time, we're gonna go back to Asia to Sri Lanka and we're zooming out. Thank you for watching, guys.